Hey guys, this is the unboxing of the Daytouch ROM system. A 1992 Japanese exclusive uh, accessory for the Famicom system. Also compatible with the NES of both versions, but more about that in a second. As you can see, this is a 2D fighting game. It's actually some really nice artwork here. This is the only way to get the device. Bundle with the Dragon Ball Z Gekido Tenkaichi Budokai game. The bundle also comes with a set of cards that you will be needing in order to progress on the gameplay. This is also the first game ever made using a Dragon Ball Z license by Toei Animations. Okay, so let's take a look at this beauty before we crack it open. Okay. It's a really bright, well done design. It's really eye catching. Okay, now let's see what's in store for us here. Hmm. Gotta be honest guys, this is pretty clean. Usually it's very dirty since it's a little old. And lid is usually missing or cracked or just really uh, damaged, but this is this is well preserved. And that lid though, uh, man, look at that sharp edges. Ah, I'm impressed. Okay, let's dive into paperwork. Here is your standard manual. How to hook up the device, how to set it on top of the Famicom, a little diagram, how the game cartridge is uh, inserted, that's some of the characters that you get to use from the get-go, a map layout for the game, title screen, loading screens, uh, some uh, details about the versus gameplay, stages, as well as indications on how to use the barcode. Stats. But enough about the manual, what's cooler than that is the next piece. Bandai's third division quality control questionnaire. Basically you filled it up, mailed it in, and you were able to enter a raffle or a lottery and possibly win a gold edition uh, card, Dragon Ball Z Day Touch card. This is basically the holy grail amongst uh, Daytouch collectors and Dragon Ball Z collections alike. Very, very limited. Next we have a promotional piece for another game, Ultraman Club Supercon Fight. This is a Olympic style sport game. Very similar to the Kunikun series who did a couple of those. Very, very common uh, thing to do in Japan with other franchises. And the back is the SD Gundam Wars. A RPG game that only if you actually know Japanese you will be able to get any far. As for the device itself, here is the main piece. Let's get it out. This is what goes on top of uh, the Famicom. Okay. On the front you have the card reader portion of it. On the back you have the cartridge entry. Here is the cartridge very tiny very special size that basically it won't fit unless you have the device itself the concept here is very similar to the Aladdin deck enhancer in the US where you have your own small form cartridge and the only way to use it is with their unit so the label facing up sits on the back of the unit the ROM cartridge as they call it and that gets secure first and then you put the unit on top of the Famicom and it has to be in that order and we'll go over the reasons why but first let's dig into the deck of cards almost every game on the Daytouch series comes with a deck of cards and there's a reason why because you need to scan them they have uh, barcodes on the back of it and in order to progress in the game or to unlock characters or items, you will need the cards. In the case of this game, you cannot even start it without the deck of cards. Of course, you can use 
random different uh, type of uh, barcodes, 12 digits and 8 digits, if I'm not mistaken. But more about that in a second. Now let's see how to hook it up to the different consoles. Now let's bring first your standard edition Japanese Famicom. Open the flap, place the Daytouch unit on top as you were putting another game. Make sure it's secure, all the way flushed with the unit. The game card should be on the back and the card reader on the front and then to remove it you either pry it out or use the eject button which requires a little more force but it can be done now one thing to keep in mind why you need to put the cartridge first is because of these plastic pins right here that gets flushed with the unit as it sits on the top so in order for you to put the cartridge or remove the cartridge if these pins are pressed, you cannot remove it. Once it's off the unit, the pins can release the cartridge. So they hold it in place. So that's the whole reasoning from them to make sure you have it on top of the unit. And you should already know that the game should be sitting on it. And then turn on, of course, the unit. Now let's move on to the next console. The Top Loader NES. Now, if you're familiar with imports, Japanese imports, that is, you know that you have to use your 72 to 60 pin adapter. You connect your game, or in this case, a day touch, to the pin adapter, and you have to face it the opposite way as you would on a NES cartridge. Now, in the case of the day touch, once it's hooked up with the adapter, the back of the unit is facing you. So you see the cartridge uh, entry uh, slot. And on the back, you're going to have the card reader portion of it. At this point, once it's hooked up, you can put the game in or you can just slide it out. It doesn't really matter because the pins don't touch the unit. So it's not flushed. It doesn't matter. Pins are useless on this version. Next console. Front loader NES, the classic NES. This is what most of you will probably have. And if you also play imports on the front loader NES, you know you have to use your 72 pin adapter. But in this case, the only way to make it work will be a 72 to 60 pin long adapter. This is a little hard to come by, but you can still find them on eBay. However, there's companies who are still making new versions of it, but more about that in a second. So you slide your cartridge adapter in, and before you lower it, you bring the unit, hook it up, and then bring it down close if you want the flap or not it's heavy enough where it will maintain it low anyway car reader on the bottom and the cartridge now sits on the top if you cannot get a hold of one of those long adapters do not worry muramasaentertainment.com has came up with their own famicom long converter this beauty 35 bucks only by the way plus shipping actually works even better than those uh, old school long adapters and also it's compatible with the audio expansion for the Famicom Disk System and games like Mr. Gimmick. I highly suggest uh, you get this adapter opposed to anything else you will find. I'll leave the link in the description and also check it out on the screen. Now the car reader will work the same way as if it was on the Famicom and you can scan the cards whether it's facing up or it's facing down. That doesn't matter really. It will read the cards no matter what. Doesn't matter if you go left to right or right to left. It will work either way. All right, guys, 
that's the Day Touch unit for the Famicom and NES. Hit like and subscribe and if you like this video soon I'll be making a complete guide on the other games and what else to know about this amazing peripheral. Thank you.